Previously on Profit, Wayne Gresham is dead. He was a junior vice president of acquisitions at Grayson and Grayson Incorporated, where I happen to work. I want to be president of acquisitions. Jack Walton's job. Remember Wayne Gresham? I never met him. Died of a heart attack. He took his job. Oh, by the way, I spoke with Chaz about your promotion. We're going to have to put a hold on that for the time being. But you should know, Jim, I got my eye on you. You can't run from me, you son of a bitch. Boy sets fire to father. Oklahoma. Last night, Jack and Joanne caught a red eye to Tulsa. Jack's my boss. Joanne is head of security. And they lied to all of us about where they were going. It's too bad, really. I guess they just don't trust me. You didn't have to come all the way to Oklahoma. We do have faxes. How do you do? Well, we wanted to meet face to face with someone who actually knew him. Can you identify this man as Jimmy Stokowski? Well, he was 15 when he took off. You know, he had long hair. Something in the eyes looked similar, but I couldn't swear to it. You told us his father's idea of child care was a big moving box. Did you actually see this box? Oh, yeah, back when I was still sheriff. One day, I come out to tell old man Stokowski to pay his property tax or he's going to jail. I looked around, and nobody was home. First thing that hit was the smell. Worse than the slaughterhouse. Only life in the whole house was that TV. That's where the smell was worse. That's where I found the boy, alone in that box full of stinking food in his own mess. I'll never forget seeing that child, a look in his eyes. It wasn't sad, it wasn't scared. Just looking. I took the boy to child services and then turned Stokowski in. What'd they do? Give him a parenting class and they give him Jimmy back. Big mistake. Twelve years later, he burned the place down with his father in it. You have a picture of this box? Oh, Lordy. Yeah, somewhere. Well, come on in and we'll see if we can't find it. Privacy. It's the one thing I value above everything else. Going to Oklahoma, I might overlook. But Jack didn't stop there. He's been running retrieval programs on my deleted files at work. My files are spotless, of course. But what he wants, what his suspicions demand, is something truly incriminating. Well, isn't it my job to give the boss what he wants? Those discs are from my eyes only. Can you help me get Jimmy Sikorsky's yeah, I want a messenger to my forget? house. But you won't find it or his fingerprints. I went looking after the fire. Those files disappeared. I know I got those pictures here somewhere. I gotta go home. We just got here. I know, but I was finally able to retrieve all of Prophet's deleted files. Everything he's done since he's been in the company. It could take a day or two, but I'll find those pictures. Thanks for all the help. Bye-bye. See ya. Why are you so anxious to see the box? I want to know how Prophet first saw the world. Jack told everyone he was going to a products conference in Denver. Joanne called in sick. Naturally, neither one mentioned Oklahoma at the office. Or at home. Hi, hon. Welcome home. Orange chicken and wild rice. Mm -hmm. What did I do to deserve this? You came home safely. Did a package come for me? Yeah, it's right over there. In light of Jack's past marital problems, i.e. his affair with Joanne, I have to wonder if he told Elizabeth where he was, and more importantly, who he was with. How was the conference? Oh, uh, great. I just have one thing to finish up here. Chaz has asked me to oversee the new art for the office. 
You remember Chaz, my cousin, your CEO. What's that? Ah, I see. So if it's work-related, you'll listen. I'm sorry, honey. I really missed you, and I am so glad to be home. I hope so. I'll get it. Hey, take off your coat. Stay a while. Hello? Good evening. Andy Morris with uh, Smart Assets. We noticed your gold card was used out of state recently. This is just a random check to make sure it wasn't stolen. No, my husband was on a trip. He's he's back in town now. Okay. It's a credit okay, card company. Just a few charges in Tulsa. Uh, a motel. He wasn't in Tulsa. He was in Denver to uh, try. This is Jack Walters. I was in Oklahoma. Okie dokie. So there's no problem. No, there's no problem with the card. Thank you. What's going on? secret at the office. It was wrong not to tell you, but I didn't want to hurt you. How could you do this? What? With her. We had separate rooms. In Denver or Tulsa? I told you I was never in Denver. After you lied and told me you were. Elizabeth, listen to me. I am not having an affair with Joanne. I am trying to get rid of Jim Profit. Now forget the fact that he tried to destroy me and take my job. He killed his father right under our noses and he got away with it. So you're telling me your new junior VP is a psychopath? Yes. Jack, if you want to sleep with Joanne, be my guest. But don't insult my intelligence. All right, I'll prove it to you. I will prove it to you. VP of Acquisitions, her brother-in-law, CEO. Smile. Nora. Hi. Hi. Don't worry, I'm not stalking you. Yet. Something wrong? Uh, everything. Since we... Well, what would you call what we did? A nine affair? Friendship. I keep thinking I'd feel better if you would just hold me for a moment. It's so difficult. I know. Well, just tell me that you feel as rotten as I do. I don't. I feel worse. If you care about me, you can help both of us by doing the right thing. I wouldn't count on me for that kind of help. Yet ye song. See, look, set, back, go, so. Hey, uh, they go here, go, fetch out, okay, quaka. Don't you, don't I get we? Vitamins? I didn't know you spoke Japanese. It's Chinese. I spent my junior year in Hong Kong. It's the language of the future, Gail. Your tea. Ngoi means thank you. Um, registered mail to you care of me like the others? Exactly. We're not documenting anything that'll hurt me, are we? No, Gail. It's just a precaution. Unfortunately, not everyone is as trustworthy as you are.
international investment. This is Richard Hale. Richard, Jim Profit. We still on for Thursday, five o'clock? I'll be there. See you then. So many traps to set. Richard Hale, Joanne, and Jack. Joanne, we got him. Actually, I've got you, Jack. The files I fed you outline the Hong Kong labs deal I worked on with Wayne Grisham and a poison they make called diaphrine. It's so lethal, two drops replicate a heart attack, and it's so hard to trace, any terrorist would pay six figures to get it. It all seems to fit. I stole the poison, sold it on the black market, and killed Wayne. So what do you do now, Jack? You send Joanne back where it all started. Hong Kong Labs. Our senior management is still in Hong Kong, but we moved our physical plant to the States in 93. In anticipation of the communist takeover, and you took us over last year. I hope we're better than the communists. Yeah, you certainly dress better. So what brings the head of corporate security down to my little domain? Diaphragm. What can you tell me about it? We developed it as a cancer drug, did wonders on tumors with one small side effect. It gave every lab rat a massive heart attack. Why didn't you discontinue? Well, there's still a market for it. Government research labs. That and the occasional killing in the Middle East. That wasn't our stock. We accounted for every drop. Let me show you. You can touch them, they're empty. The diaphragm is kept under lock and key in numbered vials. Each one has to be accounted for. Uh-huh. So how do you account for the vials that were lost during our merger? Well, they weren't lost. There was an inventory mistake that made it look like we had more than we did. Oh, an inventory mistake. Look, your people did the inventory. Your people made the mistake. If someone got their hands on that poison, I feel terrible. But you shouldn't be talking to me. You should be talking to your head bean counter. He was here for weeks. The inventory was his, and so was the final OK. Do you remember his name? Of course. Jim Prophet. Did you find anything? How well do you know Wayne's widow? Pretty well. Good. You get to have the chat about exhuming his body to look for traces of diaphragm. You connected Prophet to the poison? Oh, yeah. Big time. See you later. Mr. Chang for you again. Mm. Boss in Hong Kong twice in one day. We must be moving up in the world. Wei, Wu Hai, Alex Yi. Oh yeah, I just talked to you. I'm Jim Prophet. 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 I think I'll be back at the office tonight, Gail. I'm glad to see you knocking off before nine for once. You should get out and socialize more often. You know you're right. It's good to meet new people. Death frightens most of us, but a coroner works with it every day. He's got to eat lunch, talk to his wife, and celebrate birthdays surrounded by dead people. But when his friends on the day shift send him a live birthday present, well, he takes a few moments out of his busy schedule to enjoy it. The irony here is that Wayne Grisham, a warrior and a workaholic, really did die of a heart attack, as this autopsy would have shown. But how do you catch a murderer without a victim? You create one by adding traces of diaphragm to Wayne's tissue samples. Poor Wayne. I wonder if he understood what's so obvious to our friendly coroner, Mo. Life's short. Gotta enjoy it while you can.
She's coming. I said to cancel my five o'clock. I've got a meeting out of the office this afternoon. Well, when I asked you this morning, you said that you were free. Well, I'm not free. Is this one of your private meetings with Hale? Just cancel the appointments, all right? Yes, sir, right away. Joanne, I need to see you about the security codes. Coroner's report. There was enough diaphragm in Wayne's system to kill a horse. Time to call the police. I already did. Talked to a friend of mine in homicide. We gotta make it very easy for the DA. The poison in Wayne is step one. Step two is tracing the money profit made selling the dive. Well, it's probably not sitting in his bank account. It's probably in some offshore account hard to trace. Offshore? What? Well, profit uses this investment banker, Richard Hale, a lot. Hale? Yeah. What's he like? <laughs> Smart, sleazy. Profit has a private meeting with him this afternoon. Hi, Genevieve. I'm going up to see Chaz. Sure. Pardon me. It's all right. You're Elizabeth Walters. Yes. You're here to put some new artwork on the walls to help liven the place up. Is that right? Well, I'm going to try. A coincidence. You know, I've got a few ideas myself, if you've got a minute. I don't want to step on your toes or anything. It's just that these gray slate walls and the gray carpeting, the place is so sterile, you know? What do you think of these? It's just an idea, you know? I was thinking exactly the same thing. Great minds, huh? What a coincidence. <laughs> huh. I love her go. Really? Hmm. We own several of his paintings. Is that right? Elizabeth, what are you doing here? I told you, I've got the appointment with Chaz to discuss oh, yeah, the, the art. art. Mm -hmm. I've had a lot in mind. I know, you've had a lot in mind. Hello, Joanne. Hello. Nice to see you again. Excuse me. Mm-hmm. Jack, uh, the Grunwald deal should be closed soon. I'll have some numbers on your desk for final approval today. Your wife has an excellent eye. Thank you. Pleasure to meet you. I don't like you talking to him. Why? That's Jim Prophet. That's Jim Prophet? Your psychopath? <laughs> oh, hey, what the hell did he say to you? I don't like your tone. Really, it's none of your damn business. Is he? How's my favorite cousin? Uh, 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 beauty before age. Mm. Hey. Hi. Hi. So, Jack, you gonna sit in and give us a hand with these big art decisions? No, he's too busy. Damn right. Jack, go make us some money. Lizzie, did you hear what Uncle John did at Susie's wedding? Passed out right on the wedding cake. Shocker. Had to heimlich the frosting out of him. Hi, Richard. How are you? God, Jim. Can't you pick a more upscale meeting place? Just following orders. Right. I got him. Wild guess. The guy with profit is Richard Hale, offshore banker? Yeah, sure is. I think it's time we took all this to Ernie. Who's Ernie? My friendly homicide detective. Can you meet me at the precinct? Yeah, tonight's Elizabeth say A night. I'll meet you there. She was on the job. Kicked all our butts. So, what do you got? We know Prophet had access to the poison. We know Wayne Gresham died of it. And we know he's been having secret meetings with an offshore banker. Why work for a living when you can steal? Cheers. Welcome to the powerless group of Alcoholics Anonymous. 
Uh, do we have any people in their first 30 days of sobriety? My name's Jim. And I have 16 days. Uh, I'm an orphan. I'm not using that as an excuse. I just never knew my real parents, so I don't know if they had our disease or not. I know I have a problem, and I'm just grateful that there are people like you to help me. So have you got enough to arrest him? He met with some guy on the street. Maybe he's lonely. We gotta find the money that he made selling that, uh, dia whatever. Diaphragm. Got enough for a warrant, though. We could search his home, his office, seize his records. I might turn something up, and it'll uh, rattle his chains. What do you need to put him behind bars and keep him there? The money? Give me the money or the poison. Anywhere in his possession, I'll do the collar myself. In the meantime, we should keep an eye on him. Maybe he'll off someone else, save us a little legwork. Come to these meetings often? Every Wednesday. It's my home group. How long have you got? Six months. Tell me something. Does it get easier? It gets both. But you're in the right place. Can I ask you a question, Elizabeth? Sure. It's about Jack. When we first started working together, we got along famously. I... But lately, when I see him with Joanne, it's as if they've got something against me, you know? I... Does he not like me for any reason? It's not you, it's her. How do you mean? Well, last year when I was out of it, I left Jack, and um, I wasn't all that discreet about things. We all make mistakes. Well, his was an affair with Joanne. Uh, I got sober, we got back together, but she obviously hasn't gotten over it, and she keeps making up reasons to spend time with him. So, you're this month's reason. N next month, it'll be something else. It's gotta be hard on you. What? Well, you're easy to talk to. I haven't said those things to anybody. I'll keep it under my hat. Thanks. Drive safe, huh? Yeah. Good luck, Jim. Don't take that first drink. Thanks. Is there a problem? Yeah, the car won't start. I just had it serviced, too. You know, it's not such a great neighborhood. Um, you could ride with me. I'll give you a lift home. You can call a tow truck, get your car in the morning. That would be awfully nice of you. How about a nice bracing soft drink? Yes, please. I'd love one. A big one, please. I don't know what it is. I'm so thirsty lately. You're sugar deprived. It happens when you first stop drinking. Better your teeth than your liver. <laughs> Of course, there comes a time when you start thinking, if I have to drink one more soft drink, I'll die. Where are your children? Boarding school. Last year, after everything got so crazy around here. You protected them from it? Mm-hmm. Is this a Lester? An early one. Hmm. It's gorgeous. And you're her goes. Yep. I'm going to hang them at G&G &G for a few days, see how they work. Well, they will. You think? Yeah. Perfectly. Where did you get these frames? Are they teak? Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, thank you. Pat them down on Main. It's all right. What are you doing here? We ran into each other at... Um, at my AA meeting. Uh, I'm a newcomer. 
And like the car broke down, wouldn't start, so Jim gave me a lift. What'd you do? Steal a distributor cab? Jack. Oh, come on. You're not an alcoholic. You'd have to be human. Well, uh, thanks for the soda. I think the artwork is terrific. I can't wait to see it in the office. Good night. If you ever come near my house or my wife again, I'll kill you. Are you crazy? Jim, I'm mortified. Are you all right? I'll be fine. I understand. Uh, I'll just show myself out. Good night. I don't know who you are anymore. When a man loves a woman, he'll go to great lengths to protect her. From harm. From other men, of course and sometimes from himself. An honest man, like Jack, would rather die than have Elizabeth think he married her for her money. He's heard the whispers behind his back all through their marriage, and the fact that their relationship has been, let's say, volatile at best, has kept all those nasty rumors well-fueled. Jack has always paid for everything. He's never touched a penny of hers. He makes good money, but Elizabeth is a Grayson. And keeping up with the Graysons can be costly. If you're proud, like Jack, you go into debt. <laughs> Maybe you even keep a secret account offshore. You're joking, right? No. I want you records of any G&G employee who's invested with you offshore. Well, first of all, there's a little thing called privacy in banking. Secondly, my bank is offshore. No U.S. tax treaty. So why would I discuss any of my clients or their accounts with you? I don't know. Maybe to stay out of jail. And just how am I going to jail, Miss Meltzer? Privacy in banking doesn't protect a banker who knowingly launders money, say, for drug dealers or terrorists. Terrorists? My goodness. Are there terrorists at G&G? &G? If a G&G &G employee gives you money he got by selling poison to terrorists, you are an accessory. Are you single? I beg your pardon? You must have a lot of time on your hands. I move money for corporations and individuals at the highest level of society. I see. And do you usually have secret meetings with them on Skid Row? I have meetings with all kinds of people in all kinds of places. I once had dinner in Osaka with the head of the Yakuza, you know, the guys that cut off their little fingers, kill you as soon as look at you. Is there a point here? Indeed. You see, he offered me the very first bite of the blowfish, a great delicacy, also a great threat, because if it's not cleaned properly, you die. I ate the blowfish. You be careful. Uh, I'll get it. Toxic material. How did this get here? Our friend from Tulsa finally found those pictures. Tell me what you see. <sighs> A big box. The G and G logo. Profit was actually raised in a G and G box, according to Sheriff Crew. Old Man Stakowski bought everything mail order from G and G. He was obsessed with the Graysons. He read about them. He followed their exploits as if they were royalty. So Profit didn't choose G and G by coincidence. No, just to survive that upbringing, he had to create this fantasy family. What did he see on TV? What did he hear his father talking about? What was on the box? G and G, the family company. I feel sick. I don't know whether to arrest him or commit him. I tried hitting him. He was there when I got back last night with Elizabeth. He provoked me. It's how he operates. He makes you lose control. Excuse me, Mr. Walters. Mr. Prophet is here to see you. Yeah, send him in. I think it's about time we started provoking him, don't you? You wanted to see me? Yeah, Jim, I just wanted to apologize for last night. 
Please, Jack, I think I'm the one who owes you an apology. I certainly didn't mean for you to get the wrong idea. Jim, I don't have the wrong idea about you. You want all of us to tear each other apart because that's your twisted idea of family. When you look at Chaz, do you see your own father? Do you see how deeply you need to please him, how badly you need to gain control over him? Maybe someday you'll have to kill him like you killed your own father. I'm sorry, I'm not hearing you. Demons get pretty loud sometimes, don't they? What are they telling you? Go for Chaz's job? CEO? No. No, because then you'd be in the spotlight. That's no good. You can't operate in the light. Now, you've got your eye on the throne, but you want to be the power behind it. This problem of yours, Jim, this lurking in the shadows, do you think it has something to do with being raised in a box? I better go. Well, he's provoked. Not enough. I'm gonna get that search warrant. Invade his home. Jack Walters, you are under arrest for first-degree murder, for selling contraband substances, and for trying to manipulate an officer of the law. That would be me and Jack. I don't like to be manipulated. Got him. Ernie, what are you doing? Your friend here did everything that he tried to hang on profit. Over the years I've known you, Joe, your taste in men stinks. Get some therapy. Well, you have the right to remain Sex. silent. If you give up that right, anything you say you can and will be used against you in a court of law. She has the right to speak with an attorney and to have an attorney present during questioning. If you so desire and cannot afford an attorney, one will be appointed to you without charge. Do you understand the rights as I've given them to you? I do. You wish to give up the right to remain silent? No. You wish to give up the right to speak with an attorney present? No. What's going on? You didn't hear? They're saying Jack Walters killed Wayne Gresham. Jack did not. Jack Walters arrested for a murder he didn't commit. How does a thing like this happen? You have to falsify documents and ensure their credibility by sending yourself registered reports. And when the time is right, show it to your boss. Like the police, he can come to only one conclusion. Jack stole the diaphragm killed Wayne Grisham and is guilty. Wait a minute. If Jack was guilty, why would he have Wayne's body exhumed? Because Jim was getting too close to the truth. Jack had to launch his own investigation or make Jim look like the guilty one. Wow. I never thought Jack was that smart. What I don't get is why he would risk so much to gain so little. It isn't like he needed the money. <laughs> Wanna bet? He spent every cent he made and then some, always trying to prove he's as good as us. Pete. Hey, it's true. Yes, it's true. It's also true that you're impotent, but we try not to mention it in public. <sighs> what am I going to say to the press? It's still a circumstantial case, Jess. There's no proof that Jack sold the diaphragm on the black market. Yet. If they find that money, there's no way we can keep a lid on any of this. Jack probably hit it pretty deep. Well, we can always hope. Like you're not thinking the same thing. It's a matter of public record now. Someone sold diaphragm on the black market. The Saudis want blood and they know how to get it. It's called a beheading and it takes a lot more nerve than eating a blowfish, especially when it's your head. The Saudis can't extradite me. Oh, I'm sure they'll ask permission. I'll mention that to them in my letter, the one that details how you laundered this money. All I did was follow orders. Fine, take your chances with the Saudis. I'm told if you tip the executioner, he makes a nice clean cut. What do you want from me? I want the accounts Prophet gave you. I want to know where that money went. I only met with Prophet, never anyone else. He would deliver the sealed instructions, and I would carry them out. I had no idea where the money came from. All I did was follow Walter's instructions. Walter's? Yeah, Prophet was delivering money from Jack Walter's accounts, Walter's signatures, Walter's instructions. Prophet had no idea what was in the envelopes. He was just the errand boy for his boss. He thought it was all part of the German bakery deal. 
I never said Jim Prophet stole the diaphragm. You said he had access. You said he covered up the missing diaphragm by doing a bogus inventory. Oh, I'm sorry if you misunderstood me, Miss Meltzer. A lot of G&G &G employees had access, including Jack Walters, who signed off on the inventory. put the poison in there, and I played right into Honey, it. Honey, it's not your fault. Yes, it is. I should have listened to you, Jack. I am so sorry. God, I hate these stupid things. I need to hold you. Listen to me. Prophet did us one favor. He brought us closer together again. Hi. Well... Found out what happened to the money. It's not good. Prophet made Hale think he was moving it offshore for you. He's got your signature, your account numbers. Smart. He gave me a motive. He knew I was in debt. We were not in debt. <sighs> Actually, over the last year, I borrowed a lot. I didn't want to... Why would you borrow from someone else when I have money? Oh, Jack, anybody who would think you'd marry me for my money is an idiot. Well, there are a lot of idiots out there. Yeah, well, I'm starting to feel like one myself. We've got to talk. I'm not going anywhere. You have to think about copying a plea. No, no, no. I talked to a friend of mine in the DA's office. This is a slam dunk for them. I am not going to plea bargain. I'm innocent. I know. I also know that politics comes before justice in our courts today. And this is an election year. You're rich, you're white collar. The DA's gonna put you in his commercials, for God's sakes, and he's gonna ask for the death penalty, and he's gonna get it. So what do you want me to do, Joanne? You want me to lie? I want you to plead to manslaughter so the death penalty goes away. Right, and I go to prison? It'll buy us time. Prophet will think he's won. He'll drop his guard. And when we get new evidence, we'll get a retrial. No, no, I won't do it. It's wrong. Yes, it's wrong. It's evil. But it's a greater evil to make Elizabeth a widow. Not to mention how I'll feel if you're not around when I prove what that son of a bitch did to you and he gets executed. Elizabeth, please come in. What a pleasant surprise. You know... I've been meaning to call you, um, see how you've been. Um, I've just been so busy lately. I haven't had a chance. How do you live with yourself? I'm sorry about Jack. To tell you the truth, I was shocked. You must be devastated. devastated. My husband's life is over. You don't want to do that. Oh, yes, I do. Oh, no, you don't. For two reasons. Uh, one, I'm innocent. That's a lie. I don't need to hear the second. And B, think of your children. If you've done anything to harm my children. I haven't done anything to your children. But you're about to. But you pull that trigger. Who's going to raise them? Hmm? I don't know. Acquisitions at Grayson and Grayson entered a guilty plea in Superior Court for the murder of fellow employee Wayne Gresham today. It's horrible. It, uh, yeah, unbelievable. Paul, no, I, I haven't thought about who's going to take over his job. Yes, I know I'm next in line. That's true. The truth can be a very bitter pill to swallow. No wonder most of us need to sugarcoat it a little. Mr. Prophet? Yeah? 
Mr. Walters really did try and frame you for all this, didn't he? Absolutely. Well, then he should pay for it. Yes, he should. You don't think I'll have to testify in court, do you? Oh, I doubt it, Gail. They have so much other evidence. Jack's obsession with me led him to tragic results. That is why it is so important to be responsible for yourself and not to blame others for your problems. is always on the moment and that your plans only concern the future, not the past. Of course, that doesn't mean you let others walk all over you. One down. One to go. 